Hey guys, today we're in the book of Joshua chapter 14. So yesterday we started uh, the division of the land and we looked at God giving uh, the two and a half tribes that are east of the Jordan. So today he's going to start the process of giving the nine and a half tribes their sections of land in the west side of the Jordan or what we would call today Israel, right? The promised land to the, to the west of the Jordan River. Uh, it starts out. These are the inheritance of the people of Israel receiving the land of Canaan, which, uh, which Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers uh, houses and the tribes of the people of Israel gave them. Right. So here's one important fact. Right. So Joshua is dividing the land, but as well is Eleazar, the high priest, right? Uh, this is Aaron's son, Eleazar. So Eleazar and Joshua are dividing the land. How are they dividing the land? Notice what verse 2 says. Their inheritance was by lot. It was by lot. It was by casting. It was by a chance, just as the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses for the nine and, and one half tribes. Now, it doesn't go into detail how this happened. Uh, I believe that because the high priest was involved, uh, we have the, the two stones that help determine God's will to the high priest, the Uman and the Thurman, right? So this black and white stone, uh, and we've talked about them before, but these stones, somehow God would relay his message uh, to the high priest, and that's how they divided up the land. So um, they used this, and God used this to communicate exactly where he wanted each tribe to get and what he wanted them to be. Um, we notice in verse 4 that the people of Joseph were two tribes. Remember, Joseph got a double blessing, Manasseh and Ephraim, and that's why they get there on the east side and on the west side of the Jordan River. Uh, no portions given to the Levites, as we talked about yesterday. Uh, and the people of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses, and they allotted the land, right? So they're starting to give out the land to each tribe. So two and a half tribes are east of the Jordan, nine and a half tribes are west of the Jordan, which would give us 12 tribes plus Levi, who has no land, has no inheritance, right? Uh, so that's how we get to where we're at. Uh, verse 6, then the people of Judah, when the tribe of Judah came up to Joshua and Eleazar to see where they're going, uh, Caleb, the son of Junipeth, and the Kenzite said to him. Now, if you remember, uh, way back, <laughs> got to think backwards now, in the book of Numbers, uh, there was two. There was 12 spies that went into the promised land. Ten of them did not have faith, led Israel to disobey God, and that's why God killed them in the water, wilderness wanderings. But there were two men who had faith in God. One of them is Joshua. That's the guy that's leading this. And the other one is Caleb, right? Caleb. And so because these are the only two that had faith, uh, God promised them um, through Moses uh, a, a, sp a special thing. One, they would not die in the wilderness. That's pretty special, right? So everybody's going to die in the wilderness except for Joshua and for Caleb, right? So they get to live as well as they get a special place. Uh, so Caleb comes uh, out of the tribe of Judah and he says, Hey, do you remember... You remember this promise that Moses made with me, with God, right? You remember this. Uh, and, uh, and so we read, right? He says, my brothers, verse 8, who went up with me, made heart of the people Mel. I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, um, all the way back in Deuteronomy chapter 1, Surely the land on which your foot is trodden shall be an inheritance for you and your children forever because you have wholly followed the Lord your God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, just as he said these 45 years since the time that the Lord has spoken to Moses while Israel walked around in the wilderness. So here he comes and he says, hey, you remember the promise that, that Moses made? 
And Joshua was there, right? Joshua got to hear this promise. Of course, Joshua says, absolutely, I remember this. And Caleb says, it's been 45 years, 38 years in water in wondrous wonderings, seven years in taking over the promised land, right? Seven plus 38 equals 45 years. He said, God made me a promise 45 years ago, and today it's coming true. I get this special place of land. In, in our terminology today, he's saying, I get my retirement. God promised me something. 45 years later, I finally get it. I can retire. But he doesn't retire. He says, I am still strong today uh, as I was in that day that Moses sent me. Imagine that. 45 years later, he says, I'm still as strong as I ever was. My strength now is as my strength was then for war and for coming and going. So now give me this hill country on which the Lord has spoken um, spoken on that day. For you heard on that day how the Anaki uh, were there in the great fortified cities. And it may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them out just as the Lord said. Caleb, 85 years old, Caleb has gone to Joshua, has gone to Eleazar and said, God made me a promise and I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to go to battle. I'm not ready to retire. I'm not ready to go to a lake house. I'm not ready to get my RV and drive around. I, I, God still wants me to work. And so what does he say? He says, I remember when I crossed over and spot out the land, we saw giants, right? We remember that back in the book of Numbers. They saw giants. He said, send me to this land so that I may defeat all of those giants. That's what this 85-year-old man Caleb wanted to do, right? He was ready for war. Then Joshua blessed him and he gave him Hebron. Um, therefore, Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb. Uh, um, because he wholly followed the Lord. God kept his promise. Joshua kept his promise. Eleazar kept his promise. Moses kept his promise. And because of that, Caleb goes and starts to defeat these Anakis, these giants, um, making a way for Israel to move westward um, towards the Mediterranean Sea a little bit more. What's amazing about this is that not only did God keep his promise, keep his blessing, um, but it's the same thing that happens to us today. Caleb was 85 years old and he said, you remember the promise that God made to me? God has made every single one of us a promise, a promise that says one day we will have the blessing of the Lord. Sure, we'll get pictures of it on earth, but one day when we die, or when Jesus comes back, we will have our ultimate blessing that is given to us. We will not be too old. We will not wear out. We will be ready for that. We will be ready to serve the Lord. And through faith in Jesus, we're given salvation. We're given a blessing. We're giving a piece of land. And that land is not for us to retire, but that land is to keep serving the Lord. And that's exactly what heaven is. And so here we see a little glimpse uh, of Caleb, um, but also a little glimpse of our future. Those who are called by Christ to continue to serve, um, uh, continue to serve here on earth as well as when he calls us home. Hope that makes a little bit more sense and we will see you tomorrow in chapter 15. God bless.